In this video, I'm going to demonstrate sharpening a pencil to a point that I really love to use for drawing. Very flexible point. Something that will end up exposing a fair amount of the lead of the pencil, something like this one. This is not the most beautiful sharpening job I've done on this one here, but can you see the long exposed amount of wood here? The amount of lead that is projecting out of the pencil. And uh, this is another one that I've sharpened that also has a very nice point to it. Not quite as much of the lead is exposed on that one. Uh, and this colored pencil is the one I'm going to demonstrate sharpening for you in a moment. And um, I'm going to use a couple of tools. I have here one of my favorite knives for sharpening pencils. Um, it is a, a double-edged or double bladed knife so you can flip it around use one point and then you turn it around when that gets dull use the second point what I really like about this is how it fits my hand very comfortable in the hand the knurling on the outside of it the texture prevents the knives from sliding around if your hands are a bit damp you know or if it's summer and your hands are hot um, and I like it because I, I feel like I have a lot of control over this type of knife Another favorite of mine would be the yellow Olfa knife that has a locking mechanism on the side, also with a wide one. Um, I don't really like the smaller, narrower, exacto type knives uh, that are about the size of a pencil because I find they kind of slip around a little bit. I don't feel like I have as much control. So I really prefer this size of knife. Um, and also a knife whose blade doesn't slide around back and forth. Like the Ulfa blades or similar blades that don't lock, I find are a little bit slippy. This here is a, t a fine sandpaper pad that you can buy at art supply stores. You do not need to buy this particular kind of pad. It's just handy. It fits into, you know, pencil cases. That kind of thing is easy to transport. But you can just as well buy a very fine sandpaper um, from a hardware store if you prefer. So one of the benefits of having a nice exposed lead in your pencil is check out what I can do. Just by changing the angle at which I hold the pencil, I've got control over the different line weights that I can create. Um, I love holding the pencil this way as well. It allows me a lot of freedom of movement and uh, I can move my whole arm Whereas if I'm restricted like this, I find it a bit fussy. I find it a little bit of a pain. I can't really get the angles that I want, the coverage that I want, the line weight that I want. So um, that's why I prefer to have my pencil shaved down so that there's a lot of wood exposed. I can get a really good angle down toward the paper. This one is a, a 4H, so it's a very, very hard pencil. This one here is a 7B, so very heavy. Um, but also with this pencil, even though it's a lot lighter in tone because it's a harder grade of lead, um, I can still go from nice wide coverage to a very fine point that I can see on the paper but is a barely a mark. You can't really see it on the video. Great reasons to have nice long points on your pencils. Let's go get those out of the way. So this is the pencil that I've sharpened just in a regular pencil sharpener. It's a very soft colored pencil, um, so quite a bit of the lead gets exposed. And it's not bad. I could, I could use this in this manner, but I'd actually prefer to have a more tapered shoulder. So how am I going to deal with this if I can't use the little sharpening, uh, the typical pencil sharpener? Well, I'm going to show you how to do it without cutting your hands. So being very careful and cautious, of course, because this is a blade that you're using. So you want to make sure you have a good sturdy grip on the blade and a good sturdy grip on the pencil that you're going to be sharpening. Keep your fingers out of the way. Always move the blade away from your body, never toward your body, and don't chop down. So one of the tricks about doing this process is you take your time. Don't rush and don't try to take too much wood off at once. So I'm going to show you the angle that I'm cutting at is quite shallow. 
I don't want to cut a lot of wood away quickly. I want to cut a little bit of wood away at a time. Take your time and rotate the pencil so that you try to get an even grade, an even angle all the way around the pencil. In other words, not having big lumpy bits of wood sticking out here and there as it is right now. You'll notice too that as I'm doing this, I'm keeping my fingers out of the way. And yes, I am moving this blade a little bit back uh, forward, but mostly I'm actually pulling the pencil back. So I'm using my thumb against the back of the blade. And the style of this knife means I'm not actually, I don't have my finger on the, the um, skinny part of the blade, it's on the tool. So the chances of me hurting myself, cutting my finger by doing this is pretty slim. I'd have to be pretty distracted. So as I'm talking to you through this video, I'm not looking at what, not looking up or anything. I'm actually looking at what my hands are doing so I can pay attention. Uh, the other thing about holding the pencil at a gentle angle and filing away small amounts of wood at, at once means you're less likely to snap the lead off as you're using the sharpening method. And now you can see I'm getting close into the color. I want this nib to be fairly evenly angled, not nib, rather the lead. You can see it's a bit of a messy process too. And then I'm going to take a bit of sandpaper. I actually cut a piece off earlier doing something else, so I'm not going to waste the, a new piece. So I'm going to use my old one. I'm frugal that way. And I'm just going to smooth the wood on my pencil. I'm just smoothing it a little bit, fixing it up. So here I've got a little bit of a bump that I don't like too much, but it's pretty good overall. I think I've made exposed enough of that lead that it'll do a good job for me. And I'm just going to get rid of that last bit. Now this is tempting fate, holding this up in the air like that. Good chance that I'll break the end of the lid off. So let's see what I can do with this pencil now that I have exposed the lead. Nice big areas of coverage and when you've, you've done this a few times you get the hang of it. You're not as likely to accidentally break down on the lead. You learn to use it very well and look at that. I can vary my angle so easily changing the line weight and carve out big areas if I want large areas like that. I'm so excited I'm knocking my pencil sharpener over. So quick lesson on how to sharpen a pencil and why it's so important and also maybe notice the way I've been holding the pencil too and using this flexible way of holding it to create different line weights. So grab your knife and grab a pencil and fix that tip.